Have you ever tracked events or a schedule in a table that you wanted to show in a calendar view? Maybe something like an interactive calendar view with multiple events per day? Well, grab your favorite milk type drink and let's break down this spreadsheet. Thanks for watching. As always, you can go to the website to download this workbook or many other ones, all free of charge. Let's start by taking a look on what you can do with this spreadsheet. Uh, given it's a calendar view, you can switch the months and you can switch the years and the calendar updates. It has some conditional formatting that highlights the current day and happens to be July right now. It pulls the schedule for those days as well from the table. On the options page, there's a few options you can set through the drop downs to do things like display the current day or hide days from the previous and next months or even show the events. And the table is there too, and this is the one you would fill out to set the events. To set the event, you just pick the day and then type in the text that you want to show for the event. And you can also pick an icon uh, as well. So if you wanted to insert a new one, you can just right click and choose Insert Row and then fill out that information. Oh, the icons are in a drop down list right now. I'll show you how to customize that in just a minute here. But as you can see, we're adding a new event to Christmas Eve. And once we put it in there and switch back to the calendar, we'll be able to see uh, the Christmas Eve event and our brand new event that we just added. So let's break down how the formulas work. The key to building the calendar is figuring out this top left date. Once you know that, you can write the formula for the rest of the calendar. Here I grab the year and the month from the calendar dropdowns themselves, and then I change the month into a number based on a lookup. And the day is always one, because I want the first day of that month. And then I use the date function just to turn that into a date. And once we have the first of the month, we can use this neat function called weekday, and that'll tell us what day of the week it starts on. So in this case, it starts Thursday, and we get returned a 5. And then we can just subtract that from the first of the month to figure out that top left date value. Since it's one based, we need to subtract one from it, but instead I'm choosing to use a choose. So to recap, we get the start of the month, we figure out what day of the week it falls on, and we subtract backwards to get that top left date value. That's really a date in that cell. So if I go and I switch the number formatting there, you can see the full date that is in there. And then every day after that is just the previous day plus one. And so getting that first day is the toughest part. But to fill in the rest of the formulas for the calendar is really, really uh, simple. So let's talk about the events from the table here and how we pull them out. Here I just grab a total count of the events. And when you see events in the formula, that's really the table. So it's returning the entire table uh, here. And you'll see the, the name of the table is called events. I use a function called sequence on the number of events. And that just returns an array of 1 through the total, so 1 through 16. And then I ask for column 1 and column 4 uh, from the events table. You can see 1 and 4 is the date and the result of the text and the icon. And that gives us a 2D array with the dates and then the text for that day. I further break this down into just the events, for well, the dates for the events, and just the event text, but they're kind of lined up too. You don't have to do this. I like to break things down a little bit so I can follow them a bit more. This is called month events, and so you can tell that I'm just doing the same sort of thing we did with the table and doing a sequence where I ask for the first part of that array and then the second part of that array into two different uh, spilled arrays there in column T and V. Index is great for this because it can pass in a one for the dates and a two for the text. You can see it's the same function for all the days, but the event dates get filtered by the actual day date. Keyword filter. So we're using the filter function to return an array, and we're just combining those with character 10, which is basically a, a return. So each event shows up on its own line. You can see there, as we filter, we're, we're passing in the current day from the calendar. 
So Filter does a great job of taking in two arrays, one array of the event dates, applying the filter to that, and then returning the matching items from the other event text array that are in the same position. And just as a reminder, it is a date in that cell, so we're passing in a date to filter the event dates by. And a little formula editing tip here, if you select part of a formula and hit F9, it will calculate that part of the formula. And so if we want to see what the filter function returns here, we can select it, hit F9, and then in place you'll see Christmas Eve appear, and that's what it's finding and returning. It's just that one item. It's great for quickly debugging uh, formulas. If we do it in this case here, where we pass in the 25th, we should get an array back of two items, and it's family visiting and Christmas Day. So let's break down some of the CF and how it works. And so in this case, the flag for today is really just passing in uh, the date for the day and checking if it's equal to day. If it is true, then format it green. So easy one there. And if you notice, the days that are not the current month are slightly lighter gray. And so that's another CF that says, hey, if the month of this date is not the same as the month in the support sheet, which is what we're building off of, the current month, then just make yourself light gray. So a little more complicated, but uh, pretty simple overall. And that is it. Thank you for making it this far. If you liked it, please consider giving me a like. If you loved it, please consider a sub, and I'll see you on the next one.